Well, hi Troy. Uh, thanks for taking the time to do this interview for ShredKnowledge.com. And how are you today? Doing good. Thanks, Andy. Good to be here. Good. Um, I understand it was your birthday yesterday. Best day, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My birthday. Best birthday I've had in a good long while. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. What did you do for your birthday? So things are looking up. Um, not much. I I spent about three hours on Facebook talking to people. Um, and spent a little time trying to figure out what it is that I want to do in the next 12 months. So good with that. Very good. Well, happy belated birthday. Well, thank you. Um, so yeah, I remember um, when I was younger and I was learning the guitar, I would lock my myself away in my room um, and study from speed mechanics for lead guitar. And yeah. I'm just wondering when you were first learning, what was a typical day of practicing like for you? Because obviously you didn't have these books since you wrote them. Yeah. Um, well, I went through a bunch of different stages, you know, but I'd say um, when I was when I was just learning. So like as a teenager, you know, I'm in a cover band and learning songs and stuff. And then I'd be practicing on my own. Um, there was plenty of days that I would sit and play for 10 hours or more. You know, I would just sit with these sets of these different tunes and uh, learn them, you know, note for note, one note at a time, stop it, find the note, put it, piece it together, you know, and then I, I, I couldn't play all the stuff, so I had to figure out, you know, what was going on, and, and I started to develop, uh, you know, more and more. I mean, I always had, the speed was always pretty well there, but then uh, over time to play more complicated stuff, classical stuff in particular, then I had to develop a technique that would handle, you know, anything. And uh, that kind of, that and teaching really kept me moving forward. So Troy, you have uh, you have over 35 published instructional materials currently released. Um, however, I actually, I actually counted yesterday and uh, it was 41. So yeah. I don't, they keep, they keep, they take this content and sometimes do other things with it. So. Well, congratulations. Oh, go ahead. Thanks. Um, so, yeah, I read that you have always considered yourself a player first and a teacher second. So how did it come to be that you got so involved in teaching? Um, can you give us a little bit of a background to that part of your career? Sure. Um, I don't know why, but... For some reason, uh, when I taught, everything just opened up, you know. Um, I found out that pretty early on that I, I happened to be good at it. And then the opportunities just showed up. And so everything that I did on the instructional side uh, worked out really well. And on the, uh, on the music side, uh, not so much, you know. The bands, there was always a problem. Nothing ever came to fruition there. However you know, being playing with the bands, all that music, I ended up using it in the books, you know, in one form or another. So, um, you know, it, it, the books continued to be my, the vehicle that, that kept me active as a musician, but, uh, and I was in bands, but, um, the bands just never, never really went anywhere, you know, until now, frankly. So, uh, you know, it's finally taken off for me. It's something I've wanted to do for 20 years and just never, uh, it just never worked. Okay. Um, so would you say that right now you are in a good place where you're enjoying playing, if that's always been your, your primary goal anyway? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's like, um, you know, I, I've, uh, I've always enjoyed playing. I've always enjoyed recording, you know, and writing. But uh, I haven't done, I haven't performed enough, really enough. And now that I'm doing that, it's a lot of fun, you know. But you know, a lot of people don't realize there's a whole lot more to it. Um, you know, you have to have um, all of the elements of the career like in place to make it happen. And you know, just being, just having the music and being able to play well is only one piece. You know, there's a lot more to it to make uh, to make it actually work. You know. Cool. So um, you were, um, you came about at a time when shred and guitar and 
big hair were the sort of order of the day. So how, how have things changed for a, a player who came from that scene? How are things different in 2011? Well, you know, the, the main difference is I think that there are many, many really good, competent um, players who, who can play, you know, rings around, you know, what, what was, I mean, there was a few really, really good players back in the eighties. Um, and, and not all of, you know, people make this mistake, I think of thinking that, well, if you're a really good player, then you're going to get noticed and that that alone, you know, is going to make you successful. And it wasn't true even back then. There's plenty of very good, talented musicians, even then, that, uh, you know, that didn't get anywhere in music, but it's, it's even more so now. So there are players everywhere. It, the music industry, of course, is totally fragmented now. Um, it doesn't have the central uh, power that it once did, so nobody's going to sell the kind of uh, 600,000 records a day or what, or a week, or rather, that Bon Jovi was doing, you know, but... Uh, but still, you can succeed, you know, in, in music now, I think, you know, uh, you, you just, you need at all, something to make people remember you, some kind, you know, some people go with a gimmick of some sort, but, you know, something that's di different and distinct, and, um, and good songs, because uh, I still think that it comes back to the songs um, and the message that you have, you know, and being different, and... Um, you know, uh, at this point, you know, playing uh, playing blazing fast licks isn't really going to cut it. It's not going to do it. Um, you need more. There's nothing wrong with that. That's great. And and if you can't do that, you know, um, you're not really going to appeal to the musician crowd. But uh, you know, you need more than that. Yeah, I would I would agree. Um, with that in mind. Do you think, obviously, you mentioned that the, the music industry is fragmented now. It's very, very much a, a DIY sort of state yeah. of affairs currently. Do you think that there's a place in the market for the next Joe Satriani, the next Steve Vai, that, that kind of superstar guitar hero? I, I don't think it's going to... I don't think that it would be um, as... It's never going to be like it was, I don't think so, but, you know, I think that there is, um, you know, if you keep doing what you love to do and you get better and better and better at it, uh, you know, there is, that you will get momentum, you know, so, yeah, I think that it can be, uh, it, you can be successful but I don't think it's going to be like that. And I guess I'd also say that my feeling is that it's a whole lot more likely to be in Europe, um, you know, recognized for talent as a musician than in the United States, you know? So um, I, I think that maybe there's a hope for that over there, but not so much here. That's interesting. Yeah. Because I would have assumed that, when you were younger, America would have been the, the place to be. Um, I've heard stories about, obviously, Malmsteen moving to America to uh, right. cure his dream as a player. So, so you think now it would be Europe? Europe would be the place? Well, Europeans seem more interested in music, you know? I mean, my general sense is that in the U.S., it seems like you, what you need is a gimmick and a, and a whole lot of anger. And then you get kind of noticed to some degree, but but even you know um, you know it's 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 movies. It, entertainment is movies and hip hop and you know um, rock. Um, there's still people that like it, but the rock in the United States is more like people that want to relive the '80s, you know, uh, and those time periods. So it's you know it's the classic you know stuff that was people want to want to hear it again. And uh, not so much about new new stuff, and um, and the whole new music scene here, uh, you know, is not oriented toward appreciating much musicianship, in in my opinion. So, um, yeah, it's funny. 
you know, Jimi Hendrix, for example, when you're talking about, um, you know, America is the, is the place to be. I think that was true, sure, for a while um, when through that 80s period. But if you go back further, you know, Jimi Hendrix was totally ignored here in the United States. Nobody he couldn't get arrested. He went to um, England, um, got noticed over there and then became came back here, hailed as as a genius and all. So, you know, sometimes people maybe it's just that people don't appreciate you from your from where you came from. Maybe that's what it is. You know, um, I'm working right now and trying to get my band over to Europe because I think that we would go over much better there than here, you know. I think there's two or three times as, as big a, uh, you know, crowds or, or, you know, people interested in this kind of music or what we're doing there. Yeah, that would be cool. And do you think that if, uh, if Second Soul came to Europe, do you think you would visit the UK? I would like to. You know, my, my biggest... Um, most concentrated fan base in Europe, it seems to me, is in Italy. Um, I don't know why, but there's some Italian translations of the books. They do really well there. And I just keep hearing from Italian guitar players uh, on Facebook that. And strangely enough, uh, the Middle East, uh, a lot of guitar players in Iran. And I, what I've heard is that over there, you know, officially, rock and metal is illegal. But of course, they're playing it anyway. People are following and doing what they, you know, the younger people are, are playing the music that they want. And so it's kind of like, I see it like, you know, in America, back in the 50s, rock came out and it was kind of, you know, you know, flipping off the establishment, you know, that's, that's what it was. It was rebellion. And then that rebellion sort of got assimilated into the mainstream. Um, and it's like, maybe what's happening there is that it's starting to do the same thing where the younger people are basically saying, you know, we don't like the status quo and it's kind of the music of change, you know? Uh, so that may be what's going on. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens there in another 10, 10, 15 years. But uh, I like Europe, so I might get over there. I, I was over there a year ago and uh, I really enjoyed it and uh, I want to get back. Yeah, cool. Um... So you mentioned earlier earlier on about how you, you really enjoy recording and I know you have your own studio, Artist Underground, um, and could you maybe tell the uh, Shred Knowledge listeners just, just a little bit about the studio, about about your work as a, an engineer as opposed to a musician? Yeah, I did that. Uh, I started uh, for, uh, oh gosh, probably a couple of years when I first uh, built a studio. Uh, to run it and produced a lot of bands, you know, just to uh, just to pay the bills of the cost of, you know, the studio and everything. And uh, I did that for a while and and developed my engineering and production chops, which I use, you know, of course, when I go to do my own projects now. But um, I don't really do much production anymore. You know, it's like production is work I can do, but I don't I don't really enjoy it so much because it's hard work, you know, to make it, you know, I, I, recording is great, but I'll tell you when you have to really make it perfect, you know, you end up uh, questioning yourself and running in circles and you think you're making the mix better and then you're just, it, it, sometimes it gets worse, you know, you know, so um, I've learned sometimes to try to stick with my uh, more original idea more and just leave it alone, you know, and to say it's good enough. That's kind of a challenge for me because uh, I'm one of those people that will keep tweaking to the ends of the earth. You know, I, I'd probably keep working on the same record for two years. If at some point there's a saying that I heard, I like it's um, at some point uh, it's time to shoot the engineer and get on with the project, you know, and I think I'm that engineer. <laughs> so it, it takes me away from guitar playing too much, which is what I don't like. Yeah, so obviously it's a, it's a skill that you you would you enjoy having, but at the same time, uh, I assume you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do it as a living, full time. Yeah, that's kind of it, you know. Um, 
it kind of reminds me yeah, years ago um i was involved in uh in building this house that i'm in and i took a bunch of time off work and i did a lot of the work myself and you know i didn't mind it but when i was done with that i was like man i sure am glad i don't have to do this for a living because you know it's like it's it's one thing to do it uh here or there you know as like a project but um yeah to do it over and over in fact that's that happened to me in teaching too to tell you the truth um i got uh, i got really tired of doing of going over the same things over and over and um i don't know i just get i get bored if i don't keep progressing into something new and uh you know i taught for years but i reached a point where uh you know it started to feel like it was too too repetitive you know it was like i i was teaching these classes that i had made up and i had made these curriculums up at the conservatory of music uh and the second year that i went in to teach the same classes and use the curriculum from the year before i thought that's going to be great it's going to be easy i was bored out of my mind because i'd already i'd already done it so um you know, I think that that plays into it too. You just got to find out what works for you. You know, what 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 keeps you alive and motivated and moving forward, and do that. That's my advice, both to myself and everybody else. Yeah, that's, that's good advice. So, um, can you talk about your uh, your latest DVD, The Sound and the Story? Um, oh, sure. I understand that is your your most personal instructional material yet. Yeah, uh, the sound and the story um, DVD. I think is the best thing that I've done. You know, it's the best thing that I've done to date. Um, it uh, it was recorded. Actually, it was recorded. It took about a year and a half to get that thing out. Um, so it was recorded quite a while ago. But uh, you know, it, it sort of ties together all the books and my approach to music. You know, with a lot of music that uh, you know like there's a bunch of songs off the the new record and um and i went pretty deep into them you know explaining um uh not just how to play the guitar parts but compositionally like where my head is because i i don't really consider myself a guitarist these days um it, i i consider myself to be a musician and you know i just happen to play the guitar and so i I approach music like that, like, um, you know, like in Second Soul, and this may, some people may think this is a good idea and some people may not, that it it showcases guitar, you know, enough, uh, I think, but you can also tell that the guitar is not there, you know, it's there to support the songs, you know, and it's, it's written to support the songs, so, so it, it takes a back seat to them at times, but, um, there's a lot of that in the DVD. You know, there's a lot of of um, compositional ideas and a compositional perspective. You know, but of course, to pull all that off, I don't want to be limited. So I want to be able to play whatever I need to play, which might be at times be like really fast stuff. So you need to also have the skills to pull it off, and you need to be able to, you know, know what uh, how to how to use exercises to get where you want to be musically because my view of exercises and it's in this dvd has always been there's no set there's no preset okay you need to do this and this and this and this it's more or less like well tell me what you want to do musically okay and then i can tell you what you're going to need to learn how to play and tell me what skills you know, the music requires i then i can tell you okay then you'll need to do these kind of exercises. You'll need this kind of technique, you know? So in the DVD, there's a lot of focus of showing not just these are my exercises, but here are the exercises, here's how you choose what exercises to do. Here's the goal of it. Here's how to spin off all the variations to keep yourself engaged so that you can play for 10 hours and develop this technique the way you need to. So I, I'm really proud of that DVD. I, I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna stand the test of time, just the way Speed Mechanics did. You know, as more people get into it and see what's really there, there's more to it than 
um, than you might, you know, imagine. I mean, it's it's three and a half hours long. So, I mean, it's shit. It, it's something that people are going to have to. Um, I, don't, I don't even think you're really going to fully understand and tap what's in that DVD until you spend four, five, six months with it. So, you know, it's going to be a slow burn kind of product that that uh, it's going to develop over time, I think. Yeah, well, you've certainly sold me on it, so I'll, I'll definitely have to get a get a copy of the DVD. No, check. Awesome. <laughs> check it out. Cool. Yeah. So um, I read also, um, also on your Facebook you mentioned um, about the second soul maybe coming to Europe over the next year, but you also mentioned um, the idea of a new instrumental album um, within yep. the next twelve months. So I'm wondering, um, talking about your compositional style, how has that changed? since um, Exotica, um, and do you have ideas already for a new album? Oh yeah, loads of them. Um, I just, I, I've been keeping like lots of ideas, um, you know, here and there. Um, when I actually get into the compositional frame of, frame of mind, I, I come up with lot, lots of stuff really fast, you know. Um, but I can tell you that, in my opinion, the sense of doing a record, you know, is what does it need to be? And am I excited about that as a vision, you know? And so what instrumental record I'm thinking now, um, the reason I'm getting into it is because I'm getting excited about, about kind of breaking some new ground and I'm kind of hearing, uh, it's going to be a lot more progressive than, uh, Exotica was. It's going to be, um, it's probably going to be more simple in terms of production, you know, not so many guitars and layered guitar parts, but, you know, more like just one or two parts so that it's what's there is more, you know, uh, clear and in your face. Uh, you can really hear what's going on. I think that there's a lot of really intricate guitar work on Exotica that I don't think is appreciated because it's produced in a way, you know, if you're trying to get power across, you know, but you're also, you have uh, lots of layered parts, you know, they get lost. You, know, you can only hear so much. So um, I've kind of learned that less is more in that regard, because I, I write very compositionally. So, um, you know, I was trying to layer and I thought that would be interesting, but I, I don't know that that works that well. So it's going to be a, a little more simple that way. It's going to be more complex um, in terms of uh, progressive arrangements. It's going to be heavier at times. I think it's going to move between the different different genres a little wider. And I'll probably also be pulling in other elements, you know, like uh, world music and some other percussion elements. So it's going to be broader. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. And uh, and uh, the drummer uh, that I that I did the second soul record with, Ed, is uh, it's going to be him and I. We're going to get started on it here in the next week. So I'm, I'm, I'm up with that. Okay, so you're starting on the album very soon then? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like it'll be a very organic sort of album um, when you mention That's it. what I'm going for. If, if I can hold myself back from getting too uh, carried away, you know, in the details. So uh, that that's my goal. I, I'm really going to try to get it get get the ideas there and get them out without belaboring them and spending forever on it because now I it, it seems to me finally that with the way the internet is that there's enough connection to enough guitar fans that uh that I can put stuff like this out and that it will reach enough people uh to matter that's been my con concern I guess in the past the reason I haven't done an instrumental again is because it just seemed like there was too small a market you know um there's a lot of musicians out there doing it, but the only market is other musicians. And for the most part, uh, musicians are the worst market because they don't want to buy anything. <laughs> so, you know, if you, you press a CD and, you know, you sell a hundred a year, you know, it's kind of like, um, well, it, it's hard to, it's, it's not all about the business of it or money, but it is hard to devote yourself to something and spend six months working on something, um, you know, if 
if you're not going to get paid for it. And that's kind of a problem in today's market, you know, um, and it plagues everybody, you know. So it, it's odd that uh, people will drop 30 bucks on a show, you know, go see a band. Um, people will buy the $30 T-shirt, but they won't buy a CD, you know. Now, maybe, again, maybe a little bit, not so much in Europe, but that kind of seems to be the way it is here. It's just a lot of um, apathy, and, and maybe that's because a lot of it's just the same. I don't know, but uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a shot at it, see how, see how it goes. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure it will, um, it will be very well received, but I, I would definitely say that in Europe it's the same problem. Um, mm -hmm. In Europe, people tend to, like you say, they'll go to the show, they'll buy the, the T-shirt, they'll buy the key ring, they'll... The, the the coffee mug, but they won't buy the actual the actual CD. So right. um, it seems to be lots of innovative new ways to try and. But, the, but like you said, right. the internet's always obviously a great thing for. Uh, well, you know, I think that the answer then is um, that you, you know you can't fight what is. You know that's the way it is. So best way to deal with that is embrace the way it is and try to figure out some way to make it work. And so maybe the answer is you give away the music and then you put your live thing together and then you try to, you know, make it work that way. Or, you know, you, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't want to give you the idea that I'm, I'm just saying, okay, well, this is a bad situation and it sucks. But it's like, well, okay, it may, or it may, may, may not, but it doesn't matter because that's the way it is. So what are you going to do? And how are you going to approach it? And ideally, um, I mean, I'm always still pretty optimistic that that there's a way, you know, you know it. And uh, it may not happen. Um, like I said earlier, it, it's it's not the same music industry it was 20 years ago, and I don't think it ever will be. So you're going to be disappointed if you're expecting um, that kind of of widespread, um, you know, fame and, and, and so forth. But if you keep doing what you're doing and you do it well, and you look for ways to make it work, I think that you can still function as a musician, you know, and, uh, and make it a career. Well, wise words. And, um, just to wrap uh, the interview up, um, on that word career, you have had uh, a very successful career. As a guitarist, you have, to an extent, lived the dream, the so-called dream, of making your living playing guitar. You get the chance now to have your own studio, to play with bands, um, recording your instrumental material, um, helping lots of musicians around the world with your many books, and now your DVDs. But what other plans do you have for the future? Where do you see yourself going over the next 10, 20 years? Is there, is there things maybe that you've not already tried? or is that just a case of let's see where where we end up? Um, you know, I I don't. I think that. Gosh, that's a hard one for me to answer. Um, I don't know, but and I'm kind of just open to see where it goes. But it looks to me like these elements are coming together uh, for me to to finally uh, get out and play live and do, uh, do workshops and do uh, more connected with people kinds of work than I've done in the past. In the past, I was, you know, working like a hermit, you know, in my own uh, exclusive, uh, you know, little place. And I'd put out work that would get out to people, but I didn't get out to people, really. And I think that there's going to be more and more, um, you know, personal contact and, and, um, and, and I'm looking forward to that because, uh, I think it was kind of overdue for me. So that's the direction I see it moving and, and what form it takes, you know, I don't know. Um, I'll just kind of figure it out when I get there, I guess. Well, thanks very much for doing this interview, Troy. Um, it's been a pleasure to speak to you. And I look forward to checking out the sound and the story and your new instrumental album when it's released. Awesome. Thanks, Andy. Okay.
Okay, have a nice day, Troy. Do. Take it easy.